Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff out the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another tip video for you guys today. Today, I'm going to be going over a video that I do every year on my channel, and that's how to read and beat every single defense in the game. So this video here, I'm going to go over a very simple way to tell the difference between cover two, cover three, cover four, cover four quarters, man coverage, you name it. Woo! I'm going to show you guys how to recognize these coverages pre-snap before you start the play. And then I'm going to show you guys routes and route concepts that beat all these defenses. So if you're not a very good passer, if you struggle, if you basically just look for the same receiver over and over, or you come to the line and you're just looking for space, these are all ways that are not necessarily the best way to do it. So I'm going to show you guys the better way to do it reading the defense which is step one and then you will know what routes beat those defenses which is step two which will make you a much better passer and much better at Madden when it comes to offense so let's go and let's get right into the video now starting off it doesn't really matter what the offensive play is that I'm going to pick but I'm going to be using a formation called the gun split close out of the Niners I did a, a not a full breakdown yet but I've done some breakdowns out of this I'll have links in the description for these uh, particular plays the reason I run this formation the most is because I find number one has a great run game but number two I find it has enough uh, different types of plays that I can beat just about any defense. So for now, I'm just going to go random so we can go over some of the defenses. Then on the defensive side, we're going to start off with cover two and we're going to work our way back. So one of the first things that you should look at every single time you come to the line of scrimmage is the cornerbacks and the safeties. Those are the only two things, but you want to start with the cornerbacks. The cornerbacks will typically, in a cover two zone like we're looking at now, will always be about five yards off the line. Now, your opponent can change this if they really want to. They can give cushion, they can base a line, they can do any number of things. But the reason that the cornerbacks start in this position is because they want to get close to where they have to cover. So they can immediately be in the area that they have to cover. So if they do play back, then they're going to be open underneath. If they do base a line and they drop back to like a cover three depth, it's going to be the exact same issue. So typically your opponent won't necessarily do that to hide the coverage because it's like that for a reason. So the first thing you should look at every single play no matter what the defense is is what's the depth of the cornerbacks if it's five yards clear cover two indicator if it's if the they're spaced out like they are here they're kind of out wide that's a clear indicator of cover two zone if it's a man if it's a cover two man which i don't have in my audibles a lot of times they'll be aligned right over the receiver because ultimately if it's a man coverage they don't want to give up inside or outside release man coverage has to play in front of the receiver because they don't want if they're playing outside wide like this it's a simple slant or a simple release will get a easy catch right in front of them so that's something that you have to look for so anytime you see five yard cornerbacks five yards off the line that's a clear indicator of cover two zone now if we switch to cover three zone there's a couple more indicators but before we get into that you also want to look at the safety depths once again look how wide apart they are that's because typically this middle linebacker is something called a mid read they will drop back to cover anything over the middle so that's pretty much their responsibility which means these safeties are once again trying to get a head start to their area so they will start very spread wide apart they're almost like 20 yards apart at this point and that's the reason because that's their responsibility now when it comes to cover three the best indicator is going to be once again the cornerback depths Here's another play where the safeties are spread pretty far apart, so it's not really easy to tell based off of that, but the cornerbacks are at a slightly deeper depth. They're at about eight yards back. Anytime you see cornerbacks back that far, it's a clear indicator of cover three. You should know right off the bat what it is. And then when I look at the diagram, you can see that one of these safeties is going to drop. So your pre-snap read, if you're not sure at the, because of the depths of the cornerbacks, the post-snap read is really simple. All you really have to do is watch the safeties after the snap, like I said, pre-snap read pretty clear it's probably cover three but if i'm not sure the second that cornerback starts to drop and that other cornerback starts to i have to go to the replay to show it a little bit better because obviously i had to throw the ball away 
but you could tell post snap just by taking a quick glance at the safeties. Both the safeties are right in the center of the field. If you're watching the center of the field, you should be able to just basically tell that one drops down, one drops back, boom, you know you gotta cover three for sure. Um, that's basically something that you have to do post snap, but like I said, the eight yard depth is a pretty good indicator by itself. Now there is another defense that has eight yard depth when it comes to the cornerbacks, and that's the cover four uh, drop or the cover four, just basically cover four, but not matching principles. Cover four, just like cover three, has the same eight yard depth when it comes to the cornerbacks. So this is why I was saying step two is typically looking at uh, the safeties post snap. You're watching the safety, just a quick glance, you're watching the safeties to see if they drop down, if one drops down, if they both drop back. You can see right there the difference post snap. It's pretty immediate. The safeties all drop back, so you'll know right away post snap that um, it's a cover four. You just have to watch the safeties. Like I said, I'm just staring at the middle of the field. It's a quick glance to the safeties once the play starts to what they do. And as you can see right there, they drop back. So I know right away my cover four beaters, uh, which I'll go over shortly in the video. But that's the easiest way to tell the difference between cover two, cover three, and cover four, pre-snap and post-snap. Now, cover four quarters is a little bit different. Cover four quarters, cover four palms. These are all matching principle concepts. We'll go and we'll pick that real quick. Number one, there, I mean, you still got the eight yard depth, which like I said, that'll tell you cover, cover four all the way or cover three all the way. But now you can see the safeties are much closer to the line. The safeties in cover four, all cover four match principles are kind of like man coverages to an extent. So they're gonna play closer to their assignment. That's why they're down in the box further than the classic cover four, because they're gonna be manning, you know, these guys might be manning running backs. So let's just go and let's run the play just to show you what I'm talking about. You see, if they're too far back, they're just gonna be out of position as I throw an intercept, almost throw an interception there. But ultimately they have to play down because their jobs might be like that A route there. That's a short route. One of these guys is gonna cover that. If they're not back for, if they're too far back, like your typical cover four, they're not gonna be able to do that. So that's something to pay attention to, but they're all the same as far as the cornerback depth. That's why you have to pay attention to the safety depth after that. And then last but not least, we'll go over some man coverages. Man coverages, there's three different types. There's man zero, there's man cover one, there's man cover two. We'll start off with uh, man zero, if I can find one here as I'm trying to fumble through two different modes. Um, we'll just go ahead, I'm sure there's one, yeah, there we go, double A gap. So this is probably one of the easiest ones to, to read, that's the mid blitz. Now when it comes to man coverages, one of the easiest ways to tell man coverage is number one, like I was saying previously, they'll typically be aligned right in front of their, their target, right in front of their coverage responsibility because they don't want to give up inside or outside release. Now the safety, it doesn't necessarily have that ability, like I said, that he's got to cover the running back. You know, you're gonna to want to align him if you're on defense, but if you do that, it's a dead giveaway because there's no defense in the game like that. Another thing you'll notice too is the safeties are typically, you know, they're, they're not aligned. I'll go ahead and I'll run the play one time just to reset it now that I mess with it. But you'll notice that the safeties are not even. They're typically, uh, you know, because they have to get closer to their personal responsibility, they're typically off center from one another. That's why one safety is way far back at the, you know, the, the 35 and the other one's at the 40. That's not something you'll see in zone coverages with the exception of maybe cover four quarters because like I said, it's like a man coverage. So when you see your safeties like that and when you see your cornerbacks or you know, linebackers even lined up right in front of their assignments that's the easiest way to tell that you know this is a man coverage he's lined up right in front of his guy this guy's lined up right in front of his guy so that's the that's the easiest way to tell that you're looking at a man coverage next up we have a man cover one the same rules apply typically the coverages or the the man uh you know man defenders will be right in front of their assignment you can see across the board they're basically lined up right in front so they can't give up inside or outside release now the way to tell this between you know the difference between this and a cover three sky if it lets me which i'm not sure maybe i'm not hitting the right uh, button here um, but yeah, to change it to a cover three sky, there we go. Um, you can see that, you know, nothing really changed with the exception of those curl flats play a little bit more outside. This is where post snap read will come into play once again. Uh, as you, once again, you can motion, but you'll tell if they follow or whether they don't follow. Cover one man and cover three zone are meant to look alike. That's kind of the whole point of the system is that you don't know whether it's, you know, which one it is. But like I said, if you uh, switch it over, you will see uh, a slightly different uh, depth when it comes to the uh, the curl flats. They will a lot of times play a little bit more outside than the man coverage. But that's probably one of the toughest ones. That's why you have to pay attention to that post snap uh, and see, you know, basically are they following or not? That's probably the easiest way to tell. 
And then last but not least, cover two man. Same thing applies. Cover two man is one of the few defenses, though, where the cornerbacks play uh, almost like, you know, press without even really, um, you know, needing to make any adjustments. So you'll see here, I'll go ahead and I'll snap the ball. And these cornerbacks are basically just going to be, you know, they're just basically pressing the entire way off the field. So that's something where uh, that's a dead giveaway for cover two. They're aligned right over their assignment once again. And then a lot of times you can see the safeties. I mean, you can tell they're not aligned in front of anybody, really. They're basically just playing back because you know they're going to be dropping back in the zone. Now, when it comes to uh, some specialty defenses, defenses like cover six, uh, cover uh, cover three cloud um, there are easy ways to tell what you're looking at and we're gonna go ahead we're gonna go over the differences there I will add them into my adjustments because there are um, there are some some unique uh, defenses out there I'm not saying they're necessarily the most common but at times you'll have to be able to read them so we'll put cover six in and then we'll choose cover three cloud when you get into these more rare specialty defenses, defenses like cover, th cover three cloud, cover six, it's really just splitting the field in half. It's really easy to read uh, because the cornerback depth is usually different. On the left side, you can see we have about an eight yard depth. And on the right side, we have a cornerback who's right in the receiver's face, which isn't typical of a cover two, but it is typical of a cover two hard flat because once again, he has to drop down really quickly and get to that underneath area. So that's a dead giveaway. And to beat these defenses, you basically just have to use a cover two concept on the cover two side or a cover three concept on the cover three side, which I'll get to in a minute. So that's the easiest way to read this particular defense. And it's no different than if you go to the cover six, which is why I put it in my audibles. The, the depth of the cornerback will change because now he's in a regular cover two on the one side. So now he's at a five yard depth. And then on the other side, you have that cover four quarters, which once again is that eight yard depth. So it's really easy to read those defenses just as long as you split the field in half and look at the cornerbacks. So now I'm going to show you guys some easy ways to beat these defenses and I'm going to go back to the original formation scheme that I was using because like I said I use it based off the fact that it has so many you know plays to beat so many different defenses. We're going to try to focus on one play. We're going to try to stick with the halfback wheel for the most part because this play here has something for just about everything. So we'll go ahead and we'll pick that like I said full breakdown to this particular scheme or these particular plays in the description. Uh, so I'll pick that on the defense side. We'll start for the Tampa 2. Tampa 2 concepts are really uh, easy. You can do this out of this formation. You can do this out of gun bunch formations. All you really do, all you really need, is a shallow route and a deep route. Those shallow routes can be any number of things. It can be this table route. It can be this uh, flat route. Which, like I said, that's why it looks. You know, you see this a lot in gun bunch. There's a lot of different ways to to beat cover two. All you really need is to pull apart that safety and pull apart that cornerback, and you're going to basically expose. Um, as I'm not hitting the right button here, you're going to expose the weakness in the cover too, which is outside of the deep zone and above the cloud flat. Now, you can change the cloud flats and hard flats and all that stuff. So when you run a concept like this, you're really just watching the running back and the A route. It's really that simple. The running back's probably going to get open just the same as the A route will get open. You just have to basically watch what depth the cornerback drops to. If he doesn't, if he drops down right away, you know it's a hard flat. You got to take the, the, the higher route. If he drops back, a lot of times you got to take the more shallow route. But you can see that this is probably the easiest concept when it comes to beating cover two. Now for cover three, we have, um, you know, short stuff is what beats cover three. Cover three and cover four are both weak underneath. So we're going to pick plays that have multiple underneath routes, like once again, the, uh, the halfback wheel. So cover threes are probably the weakest underneath. They're better, you know, obviously they're better for covering deep, but because the zones start off playing back and because they typically um, don't get down fast enough, it's a perfect opportunity to basically just work the underneath route. So I could go either side here. I could go to the Y route, I could go to the running back, and basically just dink and dunk that the entire game. That's probably the easiest way to consistently beat cover three is in the flats because there's nothing really down here. Now, there are things that your opponent can do to try to stop that, including they could hard flat, but that's a dangerous proposition because if they do that, then you're basically right back to the exact same concept of cover two, where you're basically just reading what's getting covered and then you can just go to the outside and make big plays, which are obviously not ideal. So it's very difficult to cover everything with any single defense. This one here is probably the easiest one to, uh, to beat underneath. When it comes to cover four, we'll use the exact same uh, defense and we'll pick cover four drop. Cover four is susceptible the exact same way that cover three is susceptible, and maybe even more so 
because there's, you know, the underneath routes, once again, are always going to be there. So whether it's cover three or cover four, it's the same type of principle that beats cover, you know, beats these coverages that's underneath check downs and stuff like that are very easy to beat these defenses. Now, cover four quarters are probably one of the easiest ones to glitch out, um, but, you know, based off the fact that they're kind of like matching principal concepts. There's a very easy route when it comes to beating cover four. We'll go back to the halfback wheel one more time. When it comes to cover four quarters, the best thing in my opinion to do is just run crossing routes. Uh, slants, drags, in routes, all that stuff can have a lot of success because these particular defenses um, they're not really programmed. They're, they're kind of like man coverages. So the same things that beat man have success against them uh, Just as long as you use their programming against themselves uh, When it comes to cover four, like I said, they act like man coverages, but they don't have true assignments So at any given time their assignments can switch and they have to cover somebody else Which is why crossing routes can really play that to an advantage to the point where a lot of times you can just cross guys up enough until somebody gets wide open. So anytime you run the cover four quarters or cover four palms, uh, double drags, double slants going against each other, uh, double in routes going against each other, that's gonna be the best way to beat that is by having multiple crossing routes that will confuse their AI. Now when it comes to beating man, Man concepts are really beat by individual routes, where zone concepts are beat by uh, the difference between beating man and being zone is man's beaten by actual routes, where zone is beaten by actual route concepts, multiple routes pulling zones apart. So when it comes to what beats man, there's really a ton of different things. If I go to my individual uh, adjustments alone, if I just pick uh, one of my receivers and go over all the routes that, that you can beat it, I mean, seriously, the out route, the in route, the, the curl route, the drag route, the slant, the zig, all of them beat it. So realistically, um, you know, comeback routes beat it. There's so many routes to beat it. Even on this particular play, this corner route that the B route is running should have success as long as it's run well enough and it's thrown in the right timing. So that makes man a little bit weaker at times, but realistically, um, you know, just the, beating man is really all about, you know, the individual route. That's really the, the most important thing. So not a lot to go over there. So I'm gonna go to my end the video there. If you guys wanna see more videos like this, do me a favor, hit the like button, let me know in the comments section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man, my shit out. Need more help or just wanna show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Thank you.